Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative paint in watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Welcome to the Art Friends Podcast. Here it is Monday, March the 23rd. This is episode 39. And my name is Clyde J. Kale. And I'm here with my two best artist friends, Constance and Diane. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hello, Constance. Hello, everyone. And hello, Constance. Hello, Clyde. Hello, Diane. Hello, everybody. You know, one of these days... I'm going to say, Constance, say hello to everyone. And she's going to do the uh, George Burns uh, uh, Gracie. She's going to say, <laughs> hello, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's going to happen one of these days. Anyhow, I hope everyone out there, I hope all of our listeners are uh, keeping yourself safe. You're you know, staying home. And um, if you're an artist, you're working on your art. And like we were talking about last week, this is kind of normal for us artists. We usually do uh, keep ourselves uh, quarantined to uh, to create our art. So it's, it's a kind of normal thing. But for uh, the other folks out there that's not used to it, uh, please uh, keep yourself safe. And, uh, hey, good. Uh, here's an idea to keep those little ones entertained. Get them. Plenty of art supplies. Get them start. Get them into an art. You know, crayons and you know whatnot. Be surprised. A big old pack of uh, a printer paper and a box of crayons goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, sure will. <laughs> that goes for adults too. <laughs> yeah, that too. Because I'm sure after about a week, this is our what our first week of uh, national quarantine, and uh, it's I'm sure that folks are um, you know climb you know climbing the walls. Anyhow, with this episode, we're going to do a, a a virtual studio visit, sort of, with uh, Diane Hunt, with her studio. Let me get her website up here so that we can, you know, uh, look at some of her images, let her uh, talk a little bit about it. For our listeners, you can find Diane's work at www. Diane Hunt Studio.com. That's D I A N E H U N T S T U D I O.com. All right, Diane, on the first, on your first page up here, there is this beautiful image, and of course, of, of a uh, ocean wave, you know, coming in and everything. Um, where is that some particular spot in your area where you live or 
Well, it's actually in New Jersey or was uh, from a visit that I had to New Jersey. I, I grew up in New Jersey and we spent, we spent an awful lot of time at the ocean on, at the beach and um, when I was growing up. And so the ocean in general and water um, mean a lot to me. Um, we had a boat and we went out fishing a lot and uh, my mom's family had a beach house right on the ocean. So when I was growing up, we spent a lot of time there and um, you know, it's just something that's really um, close to my heart. So yeah, anytime I'm at the ocean. I mean, most people I think uh, that have grown up around the ocean or near the ocean, they spent summers, you know, down the beach or whatever. You always feel calmer and um, more at peace, I guess, with the with the rhythm of the waves and mm -hmm. the sounds and the you know the saltiness, of the ocean and the birds and all that. So it, I love it. It's uh, something that's really touching to a lot of people. It's a memory that a lot of people shared with their families and um, that kind of thing. So, with this particular piece, it's uh, it's very much alive, very active, and uh, and very. Uh, you know, realistic, you know, uh, that you've got where the, I mean, you can actually feel as if, uh, the, uh, you know, the movement in it, you can feel the, the like the water spray is going to, you know, if you're not careful, you're just going to get hit, hit with it if you stand too close. <laughs> and yeah, I, I mean, I spent a, an enormous amount of time when I was growing up watching, um, th nature in general, but being around the water so much, I spent a lot of time watching how the waves moved and how the air, the wind made them, made the wave, different kinds of waves and what caused waves to crash the way they did. And so I, I used to like, like sit and analyze all that and, and just make mental notes on how all that, all that worked. And um, so I think I guess a lot of it comes out in the painting. But it's interesting how, you know, you said the people who, you know, live near, I, I grew up in Indiana, which you know, we have <laughs> <Near an> ocean. <laughs> no ocean. Yeah, you know, we have, but we had lakes and everything. But when I uh, joined the Navy, I was first sent uh, after I finished my uh, boot camp basic training. I was sent to uh, San Diego, California, and I was there for like uh, four months. And yes, I used to. I was just fascinated by you know being first time seeing an ocean, you know, being near, near an ocean. And because I was there during the winter time, winter months. So I didn't get a chance to go swimming or anything in the ocean, but I, uh, I did spend a lot of time, you know, just walking on the beach and everything and, uh, very fond memories. Then I went right from, uh, San Diego to Charleston, South Carolina. So then I had the Atlantic. <laughs> And there is a, a, I think anybody that has that uh, has lived along these areas will tell you there's a very distinct difference between the Atlantic and the Pacific. You know, the, the water coloring is completely different. The way the waves uh, splash up on the shore is completely different. I mean, mm -hmm. you can tell, you know, where you're, uh, which ocean you know, you're next to. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, this painting, it definitely could people who live along the shorelines uh they would uh, they'd be sure to be able to identify that uh yeah this is the atlantic this is you know they wouldn't mistaken it with with the uh pacific ocean uh Constance, you want to you want to add any more comments yeah you know, about this particular piece or yeah, it just reminds me of the of the ocean, which is what you were after. <laughs> the, the watercolors are, you can, you're right, Clyde, the watercolors are different in different parts of the country, you know. And uh, you can tell this is the East Coast painting. So. Yep. All right, let's, we're going to scroll down the page here. And uh, let me bring up. Let's bring up this blue sky painting. Let me see. Yeah, this is completely different. Well, no, it, it looks like is it? It's a shoreline, though, isn't it? But the ocean is in the distance. Is that right, Diane? 
No, actually, <laughs> it's the sky that you see. It's actually the field that's across the street from my house. <laughs> okay. But it's a wheat. It was a wheat field at the time, so it's kind of like an ocean. <laughs> but um, then the the tree line and in the, the background the... of the of the forest behind it. Okay. And the sky. What, I, what I was thinking of, yeah, the the distance, the the the, the Yeah, area, I can see where you're saying that. The area right behind the green, you know, tree line. Mm -hmm. I thought that was like I'm, you know. A little bit of an ocean where you're, you know, if you if you, if you come up to a, yeah, I can see where you're saying that. I haven't, I haven't seen that before, but yeah, when well, you come up to where you uh, where a cliff, you're you you're not quite there yet, but your eye catches. You can see part of the water ahead, and you can see the. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought it was, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's still good though. I mean, now I see what you mentioned, but it's the sky, yeah, most definitely. Oh, yeah. the, the sky is pretty. Were. The sky is pretty amazing. Yes, it is. Like it. Yeah. Yeah, I think a storm had gone over and it had, was clearing out as the um, sun was going down. So you got those oranges in the clouds, and that's what the, the that distance. Lighter. That's that's what the distance part is, where you think thought it was the ocean. The dark part that's from the, the storm. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And then the sky was clearing out. <laughs> but clouds are fun to do. There's so they much are. variety in them and color in oh. them and. Yes. People yes. think, okay, there's a blue sky and white clouds, and <laughs> that's all there is to it. But and clouds are not easy. <clears throat> are not easy at all. I mean, I know some people. You know, it's easy to go awry really fast if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you know, I've uh, you know worked worked on uh, pieces with clouds, and uh, yeah, they because uh, uh, you're not thing about it, I don't know I know Diane doesn't you know there's a bit maybe a, other for other artists. I when I'm doing a cloud or, or a sky scene I'm not necessarily trying to uh, mimic uh, what I see in a photograph or in real life but I want to generate a uh, a movement or a or an emotion the feelings yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's what clouds do in real life. I mean, when we look up, you know, they generate certain emotion, certain certain clouds, you know. And so, I'm, well, I'm real. I'm realizing that a lot of my paintings go back to my childhood and what I did when I was a kid. Because I can remember laying in the backyard in the grass and just watching the clouds and watching how the water vapor changed and how the wind moved them around and, mm -hmm. um, you know, how it the light reflected off different parts and all that. I, I mean, I can still see it in my head, like, you know, the clouds that I saw when I was a kid. And it, it just surprises me sometimes that those memories are, you know, coming back to me still, like, you know, all these years later. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you a personal question, Diane. Were you, a, were you, were you considered a moody child when you were, when you were little? Moody. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> 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 you know, you know what I mean. We're, yeah, you know, you know, our parents always said, "Well, you know, you never know. You know, they're kind of moody. You know, they just kind of sit around. You know." And, and well, I, I, I don't know about sitting around, but I did spend a lot of time looking at things and just really analyzing them. I can remember like picking things apart and trying to figure out why they looked a certain way or why they moved a certain way, okay. why the how the light hit on surfaces and what you know how it changed the colors of things. I, I can remember doing that when I was little, like really little. So, you know, it's not weird that I'm still doing that now. So I, guess. I, I get it that you were probably one of those kids who pondered, uh, you know, does does soap clean itself or what clean soap? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the big the big mystery, you know, or the mystery, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg, you know, they just say. <laughs> All right, let me see. Let's go to the next one. Now this was at the ocean well it is an ocean too, picture too uh, painting too. Um the light's different in this one though. Um the other one the it was more of an overcast day and this was a sunny day. So you can see more of the um, the way the sun was hitting the tops of the wave and yeah, shining on certain parts, making the spray 
pop. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was windier too. Mm -hmm. You can yeah, tell absolutely. it by looking at the waves and the spray. Right. But you can tell it was, a, it was a sunny. The day. wind just breaks that spray all up into a fine mist when it's windy. Mm -hmm. And it's the the water, yeah, it sparkles. It really does. It has a sparkle to it. Yeah, it's a really, you know, really nice job. All right, now let's talk about this one. This, this like one a, is a swamp. <laughs> so there again, we have water. <laughs> I have water in a lot of my paintings. I've I've realized. <laughs> But um, this one, uh, it was in a swamp area, and it was kind of a gray day. And you could see the leaves that were laying on the bottom of the, of the pond um, through the water. It was kind of in the fall, I guess. We had all the orange and kind of reddish leaves down there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Reminds me of the, of the story, you know, the legend of Boggy Swamp. Yeah, <laughs> it's not so, that dark though. This is this is more of a this is a this is a you know a a a real uh, kind of a happy swamp. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a bright. It's an overcast day, but it's a brighter light. Mm -hmm. Not um, not really. So dark. they have swamps in in uh, where you live. Um, there are. This is a cypress swamp. This was from a trip that I had taken. Where was this? Uh, I think it was in Florida or down south somewhere. Yeah, Cyprus. A lot of, most of the paintings I've done have been places that I've visited. All, I think all the paintings I've done are come from places I've actually been to or spent time in. Mm -hmm. um, normally they have some kind of significance to me as far as, um, I guess it's a recording of a, a memory of being there, I guess. Yeah. A lot of the, I, like I, to I do also that. do plain air painting, so a lot of times I'll do sketches or a plain air painting while at a location, and then I can bring those experiences. You, when you when you plain air paint, you spend a lot more time um, stopping and taking the time to really look at things, and you can really analyze stuff a lot more. <laughs> Here I am analyzing things again, and, <laughs> and um, when you do that, it really puts it into your memory a lot uh, deeper, I guess, so that when you get back home from those places, you can, um, you know, do the larger studio paintings from, from that memory. Yeah. You, you answered the, the question I had in my mind. My next question was, you know, you said, okay, you do, you know, plain air, but so you don't complete the painting. I, I so, do you take any photographs in uh, of the areas that you're, you're working on or is it just, um, just, just, I do take photographs, but not, not for the color and stuff. It's more, um, as a reminder to me, I don't really paint from photographs much, but I'll, I'll use them. I'll take like a series of, of pictures at a location and it will remind me give me cute like clues and okay um remind me of what things look like but in photographs you don't get the amount of colors that you you your eyes can see um you lose a lot of detail as far as the especially the darkers the darker colors yeah um you can't the pick camera doesn't pick up anything near what your eye sees when you really look at stuff so i really do like to do um if I don't do any finished paintings, I I'll, I will do sketches and make color notes on things that I know won't come up on the film or, you know, in the pictures so that I can refer back to them when I'm in the studio. Okay. Let me see the next one. <clears throat> yeah. This is one I remember. When I first met you, uh, you had had, I think you had completed this one. This is, this is about a two-year-old painting, right? Didn't you do this one? Like, uh, possibly. <laughs> I don't remember. Maybe I'm thinking um, of another one. I have, it, I have the dates in my notes, but I don't remember. I know there was, there was one where it was a forest scene where there was a, the, like this, you know, landscape, the trees, and the shadows. There, and I was very much impressed, you know, impressed with it. And uh, the, I made a comment on it when you, I don't know if it's this one or one that was similar to this, but uh, what we're talking about, folks, is, is uh, this painting, the title of it is uh, Gatekeepers, 
and it is a landscape of forest scene. She's got uh, the barren trees and the green and, and blue like shrubbery in the background. And then, of course, the light is coming from the right-hand side, it looks like. And it is uh, the uh, trees are casting the shadows and everything. Okay, Diane, I described it. You go into detail why you did this, I guess. <laughs> well, this is an area of our of my of our property, and um, it just caught my eye. The well, the way the light com was coming across through the trees and casting those long, skinny shadows of the trees across the um, all the dead leaves that were on the forest floor. And those two big trees there just seemed like they were gatekeepers, you know, up to, and they were like opening and allowing you to walk into that scene in the background. So it was, it was kind of, um, I don't know, it just hit me. I, I like the way the light was coming through and how the light in the background was kind of hazy and foggy-ish looking. Yeah, that's what, kind of like, that, it, it, it the light, the light holes and the sky holes are really nice in this one. Yes, Thank yes. You. The it's just like you know we we watch a lot of Stephen Bauman. He talks about you know bird holes. Well, she's got the bird, holes, <laughs> you know, in the trees. With the the, the sky is coming through, but the the yeah, shadows really the shadows is just magnificent. That that just makes the whole the whole painting right there. It, at least for me, I really yeah, it's like very dynamic. Painting. Where the shadows are, you know, those trees. And like you said, it's a good title. Yeah, the gatekeepers. They do. They're like two strong, uh, you know, guardians. You know, they're kind of beckoning, but at the same time, you don't want to go in there and light any matches. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was kind of it was kind of a spot where in front on this side, on my side of the trees was kind of barren. There wasn't a whole lot there except for the dead leaves on the ground and the shadows. But as you went through the trees back in there further there was all that other that, the other brush and stuff going on and you know you're like wondering what's in the background there and yeah um, it is you know, where of, that where that path goes to kind of it is kind of back, yeah it's beckoning you so come on in you know come on in there's a like just around that corner over that tree over there is you know what's what's over there so it's a very good just an overall an excellent composition I mean, i i like this very much all right, let's see if you got you. one more, and then we'll about ready to wrap it up here. Here we go, another water one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, this one is at a location nearby where I live. Um, it's an island. It's a, um, I think it's a national wildlife refuge. And it, this was late in the day, and the sun was starting to go down, and it, it was just like reflecting on the water. It was just really moving to me. Yeah. Yes. The water's nice and silvery and glossy, and you can see all the the lights from the skies in it. It's a very a very nice composition. Really, really well. Excellent composition. Okay. Now, before we close, uh, I know we've talked about this before, uh, Diane. Uh, you paint oil, and you said you also use acrylic. These are all oil paints, right? The ones that we looked at? Um, they were all oil, yeah. And what kind of oil paint do you use? They were, you know, for our, <laughs> to listen to our previous podcast. And, you know. I use different ones, but um, I've switched over to the uh, M. Graham um, walnut oil-based paints. I really like them a lot. I do use some um, Windsor Newton too, usually, and I think that I, I have some other ones in there too, but I don't remember what they are at the moment. But and, uh, I, now I'm kind of switching over to the M Graham. And what kind Still of using up my other ones? What kind of brushes <clears throat> brushes do you use? Uh, oh gosh, <laughs> I have all different <laughs> kinds of brushes. <laughs> I'm like any other artist; uh, I have collections of brushes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, you it depends on what I'm. Um, depends on what I'm painting. Like some, I mean, I use bristle brushes a lot. I use uh, some synthetics. Uh, it just depends on what kind of um, look I need or what I what I want to. Yeah. And okay. the bristle brushes are a little harder. You know, they're a little stiffer. 
than like a sable brush or something. They're yeah. softer, so you get a softer line. <coughs> Do you use a palette knife quite a bit, or, or is it just small brushes? I do use a palette knife some, um, and I use, I have two different, I have the, I have two different kinds of palette knives. Um, some are used for painting and some are used for just mixing the color. Okay. I don't mix a lot with my brushes because I don't want to, I've found that that kind of pushes the paint into the ferrule and <laughs> messes them up. So I try not to mix too much with my brushes, although I still do it sometimes, but. Yeah, it's old habits sometimes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to, to get into the habit of using a palette knife to mix. You know, of course, I don't buy the real expensive brushes like you, but uh, we've discussed that before. <laughs> but uh, I still like to hang on to as long as I can, you know, the ones that I have. Yeah, well, I mean, I have all different kinds of brushes. I have cheap brushes that I buy at, like, the paint store or something or in – in the, you know Lowe's yeah. or somewhere and I use, use those for certain things but I mean I it depends on what I'm painting and um, what kind of how much surface I got to cover and how much you know what I need what kind of technique I need to use depends on what kind of brush you use so and it varies what, <laughs> last question we talk about technique now do you do you lay lay down a like do you follow the uh What's it called? The uh, fat thin or thin fat, you know, rule? Um, yeah, primarily. You want to um, not put a lot of oil into your paint initially, like, or, you know, and, and go from thin to fat, have the fatter on top. Otherwise, you're, you know, running into problems later on. Um, I don't paint real thickly, so I don't have to worry about it too, too much, but I kind of still do that anyway. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, a lot of people, I think the people that paint with really thick, thick paint are, have more of an issue with that than I do most of the time. Yeah. But, um, I do a lot of layering, so I don't want it too thick because I have to, otherwise I have to wait, wait forever for the paint to dry. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought with oil paint is a, is a dry period there, you know, and everything. I. I'm sorry. I just don't. I don't have the patience. That's why I still use acrylic. But I'm got an oral set. I'm eventually going to break into. <laughs> yeah, we'll get you out there. <laughs> You'll like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, folks, I think that's going to wrap things up. We've been visiting with Diane Hunt in her studio, at least virtually. You know, and uh, <laughs> a few folks have seen this too. This is a giant place. Yeah. <laughs> I know she laughs. Getting smaller day by day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Most almost all studios are like that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, this has been the Artist Friends Podcast, episode thirty nine for March the twenty third, and we've been visiting, like I said, with uh, Diane Hunt, looking at some of her artwork. You guys, uh, for our listeners, please visit uh, www.dianehuntstudio.com. That's dianehuntstudio.com. And you can look at some of the images that uh, we were talking about. I want to say thank you so much, Diane and Constance, for joining me, helping me you know, get by with my quarantine period. <laughs> and everybody out there, be safe. And uh, good night, Diane. Good night, Hans, Constance. And uh, you folks, be safe. Good night, everyone. Stay safe. Good night, everybody. Stay safe. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for listening. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constant Drostan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronzan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign 
mystery-otr.com. That's CJ Kale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.